The middle income trap is the trap that countries are staying in a middle income level uh, for many decades because it is relatively easy to move from a poor country to a middle income country. You can, you can execute all kinds of measures to create economic growth. I call that easy economic growth by putting more people in the market, by stimulating government expenditures, um, exporting low value added products. That's relatively easy to have economic growth from these drivers. But then the trap is that you are not executing uh, reforms. And one of the reforms is that you have to upscale, you have to increase, you have to move from low value added activities to high value ad uh, added activities, from low skilled uh, labor export to much more higher skilled uh, uh, labor production. And, and that relates to all these new industries we see in China booming at the moment. And I think that is a key, a key precondition for having um, the possibility to, to restructure the society towards a high income level and therefore to escape the middle income trap. If we look at um, success stories of uh, countries that were able to escape the middle income trap and to move to a high income level, like Singapore, like South Korea, then the main learning point there is you need structural reforms. For that, to be able to do that, you need to invest in the educational system. You need to have a sort of innovative context, innovative network, an innovative uh, ecosystem. You have to find the optimum way of competition, competing to each other and working together with each other by putting uh, a combined uh, government, business and the universities together into, for example, a high-tech cluster. The second question is, is China able to execute it? Now, if you look at fundamental research as a driver for innovative behavior, of course, we have pioneers like the US and certain countries in Europe. But I really question uh, the paradigm that that innovation, that type of innovation is needed. I think all kinds of other innovations are extremely helpful. You can think about process innovation and you can talk about um, the more engineered innovation instead of the real R&D. Um, and in that sense, I'm quite optimistic that still for the next 10 years or maybe even 20 years, and, and even the OECD indicate for the next 30, 40 years, there's an increase in productivity and hence innovative behavior because it is relatively easy uh, for countries like China to use today's technology to increase efficiency. So the focus on fundamental research, I think is sometimes a little bit overestimated, a little bit overemphasized. Now be aware of the fact that for international trade, the most important innovation was the container. The container was the most important driver which made international trade more efficient. And that is not really high-tech innovation. And so in that, in that sense, um, innovation as a term is maybe too broad. If you narrow down, then we can fine-tune easy steps to increase innovative behavior without fundamental R&D.